Welcome back to director and the cast of the film, Ho Rhee Day. Could you please uh, invite your cast over? Lee Hong Chi and Louise Greenberg. I have a very quick question before I throw it to the audience. I was very um, excited and I thought it was beautiful because the film was shot in 35 millimeter, which is rare to come by. So I wanted to know um, what's the reason you chose to shoot in 35 millimeter and what were some of the difficulties? Okay, um, I mean, first of all, thanks for staying. Uh, it's cold outside, so just stay here. Um, and normally I wouldn't, I would let the credit finish, but because I really want your feedback, so I'll, I'll, I'll have more time for Q&A. Um, yeah, I uh, shot 35 because, you know, I was trained to shot 35, shoot 35s, and my first feature, my short films, I shot on 35, so um, even though everyone's saying that 35 is dead, for me, it's still there, so um, I just, for me, it's, this is how I feel confident about this medium, so uh, I don't like people to tell me that the film is dead. Uh, for me, it's still a processing lab. There's still film stuck somewhere. And we're using expired film stuff from Fuji. And um, for me, you know, that's another way to be environment, environmental friendly. Uh, it's a recycled thing, you know? Great, and one question for the cast. How did you prepare for your roles and what were some of the conflicts?主要最大的就是跟那个路易斯语言不同所以这是我觉得非常大的一个挑战也是一个体验 um, The biggest challenge would be uh, the fact that Luis and I don't share the same language so I thought communication between us would be a big hassle but it turned out to be a great experience because when we were filming the movie we didn't have to use words to communicate and that's how powerful and magical movie is so it turned out to be a great experience And Luis? Euh, ben, j'ai préparé le rôle en essayant de discuter avec euh, le réalisateur Weeding de ce qu'on pouvait apporter au rôle puisqu'il il avait écrit en, avec cette image d'une jeune fille française et on a essayé de faire coller la réalité et l'image qu'il en avait et puis j'ai essayé un peu de travailler l'anglais parce que je parle pas très bien anglais du tout donc euh, c'était surtout ça et après comme a dit Wongshi euh, essayer de De, de s'entendre sans parler la même langue, mais ça, je crois qu'on a réussi. Um, I prepared the role by uh, talking to the producer because uh, he had imagined uh, uh, avec le, le directeur, uh, the director, he had produced, uh, wrote, uh, imagined the role of a French lady, French girl, and then uh, I went along and. Uh, as uh, uh, the main actor said that we use language that goes other than language, actual language. Great. Um, I'm going to start asking questions from the audience, but if you could please keep them concise and speak loudly so that everyone can hear, that'd be great. Um, show of hands. Um, in the white, please. That's a great question. The question is, could you tell us about the title? It actually has a very different meaning for the Chinese title and the English title, so if you could explain about that. Um, I took the title, English title, from Poster novel, In the Country of Last Things, and I like Poster, and uh, the title sounds interesting. Um, because Api Japan once told me that when you pick title, try to Google and make sure there's no one else has the same title. Um, and, uh, but in Chinese, uh, it's called City of Happiness. Uh, and as you can see, if you know Chinese, you can read more about what's, what the title means. Because uh, 
Chinese Xing Fu, two words uh, in Chinese is more than happiness. And if you go to Taipei uh, on the street, everyone uses these two words to sell house, ice cream, everything. So, you know, they, uh, I, I guess they think this is a concept that people can buy into. Uh, so for me, this is, uh, it just, just to uh, tell people that, you know, nothing's on the surface, you know. Yes, in the front. The question is about the first part of the film. Um, how important is it to be a futuristic? Um, for me, when I do this reversal structure, I mean, of course, I can start with the present, present, you know, and go back to past and for the past. But for me, to have a future is actually uh, for people to really kind kind of you know because we're in present right now so you can actually look back and look forward and for me it's a really nice point of view and uh, i know it's kind of bleak for the future but it could be uh, something i don't know it's a warning maybe you know if you don't want the future to be like this maybe we can do something right now you know uh it's it's just for a way to kind of uh think about what's going on that uh like from your past and from your future Right. Yeah. Well, in the half. Hi. Um, so I really enjoyed the film. Thank you so much for that. I was just wondering, like, with the film itself, there's three different stories. So maybe you can talk about the the themes that you try to explore in them. Your film has three stories. Could you um, explain about what you were trying to explore in each of them? For me, there are one story. It just happened in three nights uh, for a person because you know it's life is quite long. So. There's so many stories happen in your life. So, um, but as you can see, there's a pattern. Uh, you know, even though I, I, uh, I have a challenge of trying to make this tree story different, but yet it's not three short films together. You know, it has to have a consistency um, because it's it's three nights happen in uh, someone's life. So, um, and but we still try to make it with the seasons, you know, as you can see, it's winter, summer, and spring, and the different time zone, and um, the different uh, look, because uh, we try to make it slightly different. But for me, it's still, it's still one film, yeah. Great, any other questions from the audience? I thought I saw, yeah, in the gray. Hi, uh, love the movie, I, I enthusiastically love it, I thought it was so great. Thank you. The question was, were you influenced cinematically by other directors or other works? It's nothing fresh under the sun. So if you want to pick every <laughs> single frame, so, I mean, people say there's a frame when uh, they are in the back seat of the taxi, looks like lonely together, and not, not, they're happy together. I mean, I, I uh, you know, we, uh, we grow up watching films. So uh, maybe subconsciously, you know, we, uh, we kind of, borrow from some images from the film but um i don't know if it's finch it's up to you you know it's with a, uh lynch no, i'm sorry not fincher david lynch and uh, and you know it's people say it's Wang Kai Wei, Ho Xiao Xian, Jia Zhang Ke, I, you know uh yeah it's, it's it's cool if you think this is you know where i steal from when you steal something from the master that's good you know yeah in the checker shirt Is there a reason why you wanted to talk about corruption and gangs? Uh, because I think it's happened more often in the West, uh, like in the East, in Asia. Um, I'm Malaysian, so if you read about Malaysian government, uh, you know what happened. Um, I'm from, you know, I mean, yeah, it's it's corruption is quite common um, in where I come from. Uh, cops doing, I mean this, I don't think it just happened, uh, I think it's happened everywhere. Uh, so, uh, 
it's just that for me to have the character as a cop, uh, it's very close to, you know, it's more, it's more edgy, it's more risky. And uh, also because I start out making a genre film, so uh, of course you have uh, some film noir elements inside, so that's why I pick um, just, yeah, as a plot, yeah. Great, I have another question for the cast though. What was the most difficult scene in the film and how were you able to overcome it? C'était la scène la plus difficile, c'était la scène, euh, la première scène où je me fais arrêter, où il fallait, euh, où je devais courir et j'avais, enfin bref, on a dû la refaire plein de fois et après on devait faire la cascade où je tombe en arrière et tout ça. Donc ça c'était la plus dure, mais c'était drôle quand même. The most uh, difficult scene for me was the very uh, beginning when I was running and I had to ring uh, to run and afterwards uh, sort of make a sort of backward somersault, so that was quite challenging. Yeah, that was a big tumble, and I was looking for any scrapes there, but it looked okay, and I was pretty surprised at how much you were physically um, willing to put into that act. And... Uh, I think the most difficult place to do is to do the scene, because... How do you say it? Because it's a night story. 所以观众看的感觉可能是短短的三十分钟、四十分钟 to me personally, I think, to be honest, the whole plot was quite challenging and difficult because it, the story tells um, one night in my life. However, um, you may think it's six or seven hours in real life, but we have to do it quite a few times or for quite a long time. And um, so the scene, when we were filming the movie, we have to jump back and forth to view a whole story. For example, if I cried for the specific scene, and two days later, we're going to do something that's directly related to the crying scene. I have to pull my emotions back to when I cried and try to make the story um, continue and um, to link it all together. Yeah, I had to hold back my tears when you were crying on the ground. Um, that was a very emotional scene, and I thought that was performed excellently, so. Thank you for doing that. Um, do we have any more questions from the, uh, anyone from the back? Yes, I see over there. Is there an overarching theme or a tone that you're trying to set, especially with the futuristic part, including the rejuvenators and the clones? Uh, it is basically the theme of, you know, stop against nature. Uh, for me, it's like people don't talk, talk to each other anymore because of the cell phone. Uh, people do plastic surgery because they don't trust their self-image anymore. So everything, all the technology happening right now, it's, it's, all, it's all against the new term the nature of a uh, human you know so um, even you know you can just instead of you know like using finger you can just do like the magic act so for me this is humans gonna be uh, uh, they're gonna lose their function you know because we don't walk anymore we don't talk anymore so yeah that's I think that's the the thing I'm trying to find uh, but of course, the budget is an issue. I'm not, you know, we're not from Blade Runner, so we cannot do much. <laughs> so we have to come up with a creative way. Um, yeah, so um, that's, I think that's the answer. Great, do we have any more questions from the other? In the white, please. Yeah, um, I'm very interested in like the language barrier between the two main characters. Um, so I was wondering if, um, like chemistry is a very important thing in like uh, between two people and like, with love interest, is there was so for the actors and that like, do they have any personal time where they like talk to each other to sort of prepare, 
or do they just like come on set and just like have Kim's street? The question was, I'm very interested in language barriers and how did the two lead actors, because they speak different languages, how were they able to communicate? Did they have any um, extra time to discuss in advance and how did you prepare for this kind of chemistry? Uh, Rango 不知道我的家世背景，但是他愿意信任我，愿意跟我一起出去。我觉得这就是可能演员跟演员最美好的地方。We actually rehearsed only once, and uh, as mentioned earlier, language barrier was one of my biggest, uh, I thought would be one of my biggest challenges. However, when we met, we just clicked. And in fact, we went out clubbing last night. We only used simple words like yes and no, but we were able to communicate quite well with each other. And this is the beautiful part of being actors and actresses, because we film movies. It's just like music. It's a universal language, and it's a great feeling. That's a great answer. Louise, do you have anything to add? Um, no, say. You did it perfectly, and I should have not to No, just say, c'est-à-dire qu'on a eu de la chance, parce que ça aurait pu être très embarrassant de de tourner. En plus, c'est une histoire d'amour, enfin, on doit faire croire à cette histoire, sinon le film ne se tient pas. Donc, si on ne s'était pas entendu, ça aurait été un peu catastrophique. No, uh, we, were, we were lucky, especially since it is a love story. If we were not able to, to communicate and click, would have been an issue, but it, it worked well. I just can't believe they still do rehearsal after the film is finished. Yeah. <laughs> I think we only have time for one last question. Um, in the gray, I think? Yeah, you, yeah. What's the intention of the first scene of the movie where the man jumps out from the rooftop? Well, you know, I mean, talk about David Lynch, Blue Velvet, it's the same idea that, you know, I'm you know, trying to tell you this is could be a really serene scenery and happy moment, but, you know, things happen. Yeah, I just don't want to wake you up, otherwise, you know, I just want to warn you that this is not easy film to watch. Let's do just a quick last one, I think some of us, yes. The question was, why did you put a Western character into the film? Uh, it's for, for that guy to run away from his harsh life that night, you know, if he's going to meet someone in some fantasy. For me, we were considering using people from Japan and Korea, but it's not, it's not far enough. You got to find someone really far for that, for him to, you know, feel like he can escape from this place. And also, um, Again, it's a language thing I play with, you know, because for me, uh, sometimes it's good to have someone you don't speak, but you can interact with eyes and, you know, body language. Um, yeah, and, and, and also I believe um, Edward Young has a film called Mahjong, and I don't know if you guys know, it's a, he, he also has a French character inside the film. It could be my, my you know, my paying respect to him, yeah. Great, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you to the rest of the class.